G'day folks, welcome to a Thursday afternoon and it's cold outside it's going to be cold outside for a while but yeah just doing a few things in the shed and working out what I'm going to do with the uh, Battenfeld injection moulding machine um, I'm definitely taking it apart but I'm just sort of pulling my hair out trying to work out how I'm going to test run it I want to run it and demo it that was sort of half the idea of getting it not just to pull it to bits but I don't know if that's going to happen I mean I've been looking at getting a uh, upgraded power connection to the shed for a while now but not three phase that's not in the budget um, I was hoping it'd be as simple as getting a sparky out to uh, come and do the final hook up and that sort of thing which is okay I mean I normally run my own cable and conduit and I just get it signed off by a friend but this involves the power meter itself well not so much the power meter but the um, wire going from it to the panel that I've never seen inside my panel before and it's basically a dog's breakfast it's a mixture of everything and it looks nasty I could build a better panel in my sleep I could build a better panel blindfolded and it'd be safer too because there's some underrated wire in there that's not particularly good um, the main concern is the feeder from the smart meter to the main RCD the safety switch that's what distributes power to everything else and it's probably thinner than this this would have to be six millimeter square at the most um, it looks thinner than that it's lagged in cloth black cloth tape so it's probably original from the 1960s uh, yeah I'm thinking I might even pull the main house views on the fascia board and just see what it's like like I'm not even game enough to touch it as it is and essentially it just goes into a double screw terminator and then spli splices off to some uh, what's definitely six millimeter cable one going to a detector module that has a big earth lead in it and another going straight to the RCD so I don't know what's going on there but the wire after it's rated properly but the wire to the meter is not at least not for a uh, 80 amp service um, at the moment it's only 40 amps I was hoping I could get a Sparky to install that which is also another 40 amp breaker uh, come RCD a safety switch something that's mandatory on all main electrical installations in Australia I think um, that was $32 it's not too bad but it's a shame if I can't use it it'll just have to sit in stock until I can but it's essentially a 30 milliamp ground bolt interrupter, earth leakage breaker, safety switch, RCD, whatever residual current device, whatever you like to call it. It's one of those. Um, I was even debating not using one, but if we're going to branch off from the main feed from the meter, legally it has to have one. So I'd have this installed out here and a regular 40 amp breaker or even a D curve breaker in the panel on the house so that way if I do get moisture in something or cock something up I'm not walking up to the house just to turn it back on again because that's annoying that gets old real fast especially when you've got an air conditioner with a tiny drop of moisture in the bloody relay or the thermostat or something it just drives you nuts I love them and hate them one of them saved my life or possibly might have saved my life once before but we'll never know but at the same time they've made my life miserable a thousand times over so it's a love-hate relationship with RCDs and same with dodgy old wiring which is annoying me right now because I want a good feed out here but the most I don't know maybe the old wiring's okay I'm gonna get my mate to look at it anyway and uh, see if we can see about running a conduit under the house I'm gonna be the one that has to run the conduit and everything he's not gonna do it for cheap if he has to climb under the house and do it but yeah um, and most of all it'll be mostly legal at least well if not fully legal there's really strict rules governing uh, electrical work in Australia you can't do like what some people suggest and just tap into it or even replacing your own power outlets you can't do that without a disconnect license or something and when it comes to the uh, main meter board even someone with a disconnect license can't do anything so it's pretty tricky but anyway as you can see I've got a big VLT drive here I've been playing with this one here, I'm pretty sure it's this board here that puts a, a small amount of uh, AC current to ground. Uh, apparently it's a characteristic of some of the bigger and older drives. And that takes out the RCD as well, so that's one of my other annoyances. 
Everything's fine until the RPC comes up, it detects three phases and goes to engage the contactor. Well, not even that, it doesn't even get a chance to engage the contactor to the uh, rectifier. As soon as three phases are generated, I think it's this that's sending it to the ground. It's got metal oxide varistors and a lot of these caps, polyfilm caps. I've got a feeling that's the problem and I know, I was talking to Terry about it and we canned a drive about quarter the size of this because it was just routinely or occasionally taking out the RCD and apparently it's just a common thing with those old drives. One option is to not or ground the metal case but not ground the internals because they often have an independent ground but this one's grounded to case in every aspect so I can't not ground it. It floats at about 190 volts, I've tried it. While it might not be much, even if I touch it and, and it grounds out, it's going to trip the RCD. Even if it's not enough to hurt me, the RCD will know and lights out. So, yeah. Not, probably not a good idea to run it ungrounded unless it's in a controlled area where you know it's live and you're not, not going to touch it. But either way, it does its usual thing plus clicky clicky relay thing up here. Probably because it's not a, not happy with 220 volt three phase, it wants 380 plus. Uh, yeah, it, but it does work, it does its usual thing. Boots up its on, onboard ROM and just comes up with motor error. It just says motor error and doesn't let me try and start it or change speeds or anything like that. So, I don't know. The DC bus is happy. I've got something like 600 volts DC across the caps and the IGBTs, so they're not short. But motor error could be just a software issue, maybe that's bugged out. Maybe the ROM or something in it's gone. Don't know. I've never really played with these big ones, actually running them. I've taken plenty apart, but I've never run them. Uh, it would be nice to get it going, especially for an uh, electric car. Take the 10 horse motor out of this, reconfigure this for DC input only, like get rid of all the AC dependency, and just feed... feed um, 24 volts into the control side of it, which I'm thinking there's a little transformer there and there's one on the board here which definitely says 24 volts. There's a tap for a fan and something else somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's 24 volts, that's 24 volts. Maybe 5 volts as well for the uh, digital logic side of it. But I could see this being fairly easy to convert into a uh, EV drive. I know people have used Danfoss VLT to drive electric cars, homemade electric cars using lots of lead acid batteries. I think there was a guy, there's a photo of a guy in Russia with a little hatchback and he's just got standard car batteries in the back and big Danfoss VLT stickers all over the windows. That's got to be a good sign. So, yeah. If I give up on getting the micro on the road, who knows? I might even rip the engine out and do that. That'd be interesting. Get the micro roadworthy and transferred into my name then pull the uh, gas engine out and put a uh, 10 horse electric motor in it. Because that ABB three phase motor is not cheap, they are good motors. And I would like to use it for something really beneficial. Apart from that, the clamp unit's pretty impractical to use for anything else. With its big, special um, rigid flared lines, all that sort of stuff. And very complicated valve block with a million and one other different functions. I'm not going to be using that, I'm going to try and cut this section here out and uh, just drag the whole front off it with the crane. Obviously it's too high to lift clean free from the chassis. I'm going to have to do some fancy cutting and that sort of stuff but uh, it doesn't matter. And this base section there is welded, welded sealed so that's a drain tank or a flood, uh, basically a flood tank in case something leaks. That'll be handy too. There's going to be oil leaking out of everything by the end of this. I'm just going to build a uh, vacuum drum essentially. Attach a wet dry vac to a 44 gallon drum via a big truck air cleaner and just suck all the oil out of the valve block and the hoses and everything. Just go to town on it. Should work quite well. Only recommended for non-volatile non oils. I've used regular shop vacs to suck up hydraulic oil plenty of times but don't use it for fuel oils and things like that or gasoline. Things go boom. The old vacuum cleaner inferno, an explosion. But yeah, that's a decent motor. I could see that fitting in a small car or something quite well, along with that drive. That's a 15 horse drive, 10 horse motor, so there's room for upgrades. 
yeah, good stuff. Really good stuff. Likewise, things like these ram rods and other stuff like that, that's good steel. It's good machinable steel. There's just so much good stuff in here. And again, nobody wants it. I talked to our local plastics places and basically they made the same offer I did. Scrap value. Actually less, but they, they want to pay less than what I paid for it. So, nope. It's not going anywhere. No one wants it. So, apart from me, for parts. So stop bitching about it being a waste. I know it's, it, is a, it is a waste, I'll admit that much, but don't take it any further than that. It's kind of funny how it brings out dislike trolls. I noticed the dislikes on the last video went up. <laughs> That's kind of funny, actually. Oh well, you can't save everything as they say, and I guess if you want, if you actually want to save it, well, front up with a fistful of dollars and a um, beaver tail trailer, because that's about the only way you're going to get it out of here, is winch it onto another trailer. And I ain't helping much. It's all on you. <laughs> I mean, this thing's worth a few grand to me now that it's here, so if you want to offer me, I don't know, four grand or something for it, fine. I'll even, I'll even make it three grand, but... Combined with the motor and all those bits and pieces, I now I've got to put a dollar value on it beyond scrap. So, yeah, front up or shut up. That's all I have to say. I mean that in a nice way because some of my loyal subscribers and friendly subscribers were a bit disappointed that I'm destroying it. I know it's sad, but yeah, if you want it, speak out and be prepared to make a move because it's got to go soon. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more because. If I don't get electrical service on, or confirmed to get the electrical service upgraded this weekend, this is coming apart. And we'll start by draining the oil and that sort of stuff. Oil's in good nick though. It was tested last service. Battenfeld did a uh, lab test on it and said it was fine, so I'm going to drum up as much as I can. Anyway, that's enough. Nice long video. There's not much else to do tonight apart from tidy up and get rid of the bits of RPC and other enclosures and things that I've had sitting around. There's a million and one different things to do. And you'll also see a video later of turning that crappy old hydraulic pump, which leaks like a sieve, well, leaks like a sieve under back proper pressure, into a basic redneck oil recovery pump. So, yeah, I'll mount that on a board with a uh, electric motor direct driving it and use it to suck the oil out of the tank and the the um, drain tank down there, the, the uh, overflow tank, and yeah, we'll have a bit of fun. Hopefully not get too much on the floor. Because, uh, yeah, concrete does soak up oil pretty well, but there's only so much it can soak up before it just stays greasy, and that's when it's dangerous. And combustible, which is also, well, sometimes good. In this case, not good. Oh, well, I'm still going. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. We're all losing our marbles. You've got to lose your marbles before you start posting crap like this on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, have fun. Stay safe.